The first presenter is Dr. Antonia Kalafat. She is the head of the analytical toxicology branch of the famous CDC in Atlanta, Georgia. She is also editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Hygiene and Environmental Health. A very warm welcome to you, Antonia. I think it's early morning in Atlanta. The microphone is yours. There we go. Well, good morning, everybody. It is my pleasure to be speaking today in a session shared by my beloved friend, uh, Holger Koch, and talk to you about the, the, the work that we have been doing in the United States um, in biomonitoring through the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, ENHANCE. ENHANCE, many of you know, is a survey that is uh, conducted by uh, CDC, where I work, and is um, a sample of the, of the US general population. Each year samples about 5,000 people going to 15 different locations um, in this mobile examination center um, units that you see on the left side of the slide and uh, provide results in two year cycles is a comprehensive examination and survey that includes a physical examination, collection of um, demographic and historic uh, data, medical history data, uh, behavioral data from the participants, and importantly also collects biological specimens, namely blood and urine, which are the ones that we use for biomonitoring. Biomonitoring in enhance has evolved uh, throughout the years for the past 35 years or so, uh, then um, we have um, almost 50 years actually. Um, we have initially there were no environmental chemicals, and uh, through the first cycles of enhance that were not uh, ongoing and annual, and um, we started having a few more with that enhance three, and starting with enhance 1999, so about almost 20 years ago. We started including some environmental chemicals, about 100 of them, and now we are in, actually, these are data from the 2015-16, the latest public data, about 150, we are close to 400 now. It's important to know that in the way that we selected these chemicals was an open process that actually took care, happened several years ago, about 15 years ago or so. We solicited nominations for candidate chemicals to be included, and uh, some of the criteria for inclusion were obviously having um, scientific data that suggested exposure in the general population, um, that they could be, uh, that these chemicals had some toxicological health effects, at least in animal studies, and uh, to, whether there was a possibility to assess the efficacy of public health actions. Obviously, we had to have uh, adequate analytical methods, and um, we had to have either blood or urine for analyzing the, the measuring the compounds. And it was, you know, it's expensive. Biomonitoring is expensive technique, as many of you know, so we should be able to afford those costs. Um, throughout the years, we also had been able to include some removal criteria. And um, then in some cases, if we find better biomarkers that, you know, detection rates are going down or we're not seeing clear trends, then we're trying to stay um, up to speed if you want, and then just uh, making sure that we're selecting and measuring what is relevant. These results, these biomarking results, are different, important, different to what is happening in many other parts of the world, um, including um, for your HBM, for your initiative. Uh, enhanced participants only receive select metal results. They do not receive most of the biomonitoring data. However, these data are posted publicly on the Enhanced website um, and they're updated monthly with any new type of data. May not always be the biomonitoring data, maybe some type of survey information, but all these data are public. And then what um, in our center, what we do in addition to all this public data, we prepare what we call the national reports on human exposure to environmental chemicals. This is a picture of um, the latest report in January of 2019. We're due for a new one. The 2019 report included data up to 2016. And an example of the display of the data is shown on the slide on the right side. Um, includes a breakdown by age, um, race, ethnicity, and, um, and sex, and provides information and tabular information on geometric mean, medians, axial, and percentiles. 
these reports provide the most comprehensive assessment of Americans' exposure to these select chemicals. And, um, and the little time that I have left, I want to just talk about the examples, some of the examples of enhanced uh, use um, in, in, uh, in public health as the spokes in a, in a biomonitoring wheel. Um, today, I'm just going to talk about tracking temporal trends and identifying some emergent exposures. Um, biomonitoring is incredibly powerful, and one very important use is assessing temporal trends. This is an example looking at select perfluoroalkyl compounds. Um, and we were fortunate to have data from enhanced 1999-2000. And these data are data uh, collected before changes in manufacturing practices in the United States in the early 2000s. And uh, I'm showing four, three examples with this geometric mean uh, concentration on the, on the y-axis and the enhanced cycle on the x-axis. And um, we didn't have serum in 2001, 2002. That's why there is a gap. But as you can see, there is a very nice decrease in concentrations of PFOS, for example. These concentrations have been reduced by 80%. However, it's important and likely because of the changes in manufacturing practices. If the chemical is not in the environment, there is no exposure or exposure goes down. Um, however, these PFASs are still produced in China. And because these are pops, is important that, and we live in a global world, is important that we continue monitoring exposure to these compounds. Um, in, at the same time that we're looking at trends, um, this is an example with a phthalates, another group of compounds that are very dear to my heart. And um, for these compounds, um, there have been some legisl legislative actions and public awareness that have resulted in change in exposure. And what we see in this, in this slide are the concentrations of um, biomarkers of two important phthalates, DIMP and DHP. DHP in purple was um, what they use as a PVC plasticizer. And what we see is as legislative actions took place, the concentrations of this chemical um, or the biomarkers were going down, but the concentrations of one of the replacements, uh, another phthalate, DIMP, were going up. However, in 2015-16, it seems that there was a decline and we believe that this is because there is a new compound, DENCH, a non-chemical plastic, a non-chemical, I'm sorry, a non-phthalate plasticizer that may also be replacing um, DHP. Therefore, what we're seeing is that some chemicals are leaving the market, some other chemicals are coming in. And um, in short, I just want to, um, this very short uh, presentation, I want to, um, emphasize how biomonitoring data can be used to strengthen exposure assessment. Um, enhanced data in the United States have been important to inform public health policy and being able to identify background exposures, many of them since the early um, 2000, and um, evaluate some tra tracking exposures over the time, um, evaluate the success of interventions, and um, identify some market changes that can be useful to drive uh, public health policy. This um, data are data that I didn't I didn't generate um, by myself. I want to thank before I conclude my colleagues at the National Center for Health Statistics and at the National Center for Environmental Health who have been instrumental in just generating this, the, the enhanced data that I have showed you today. And I thank you all very much for your attention.